a monthly crime watch. Welcome back. It has been a fascinating evening here. I can't say we've had more calls than ever before, but some really intriguing details. On the Budick Forsyth murder, well, we've possibly identified his friend Steve. We've one intriguing call about the motive. On the Halifax robbery, two, possibly three callers. I'm not quite clear yet, given details of the same man. Another two names have been repeated on that horrible robbery in Horsham. Photocall two seems to have come up trumps. So. Right, well, we'll start with the case in Horsham, the robbery of a couple at their home at Five Oaks in Sussex. As the gunman demanded money, they were unaware that the emergency services were recording everything. Well, Mr Wyeth, you've had an enormous number of calls on this. Yes, there's been a, a fantastic response. We've had over 100 calls in this studio and um, uh, back at our incident room, something like 50 calls, and many of them have been uh, naming names and uh, some of them uh, repeated, so some very positive leads there. And a lot of people wanted to hear that tape again, so let's hear a short clip of the tape recorded by the emergency services. See if you can uh, hear hey. the voices. And the fact that you wouldn't turn me like that. No, turn me the other way. I don't even look at you. I said, turn me any other way. Stop. Yeah. Where's your kettle? Be a good chap, you'll be all right. Have you got it? You seem to have had quite a lot of people who seem, think they might know those voices. Yes, indeed. Um, and some have um, focused our attention on particular parts of London, um, some information on the access, sent some information uh, with regard to use of the terminology like gaffers, etc. Mm, you've had one particular call that's very interesting, but we can't give details about that at the moment. Certainly. Um, you didn't have anything on this uh, rather distinctive knuckle duster here. No, that's uh, surprised us a little bit. It's a, a brass knuckle duster. Um, we don't know whether it's a one-off or uh, whether there are an, a number of them. We'd like to hear a little bit more about that, certainly. And what about the man who was seen in the Little Chef that night? Any calls on that? Yes, we've had a number of um, calls that relate to the uh, video fit there. Um, we've had no calls from any witnesses that were in the Little Chef or uh, perhaps in the Travel Lodge. Uh, we'd like to hear from them as well. Right, so far, Mr Wire, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, now the murder of uh, Bulick Forsyth. A local government official was battered to death at his home in South London. Someone then, at dead of night, set fire to his home while families were asleep in all the other flats. Brian Tompkins, not a vast number of calls, but you seemed pretty happy earlier on. Yes, I am. We've had a good response. Um, an interesting line of inquiries as well. One in particular has taken us down the line of Steve, a man we wanted to trace. We had uh, a pretty good impression, too, of a man who was seen with Bulick, and well, there were two of them, but one in particular seen with him in an off-license opposite his home. Yes, there's been several calls in relation to that, and we're hoping they may be fruitful for us. We'll be following those up tomorrow, definitely. And I was also saying earlier on, an intriguing call about a possible motive. Now, what can you tell us on that? I can't tell you too much at this stage, but it is intriguing. Um, it's, it's an interesting line, and we will certainly be following it, uh, following it through. OK, it's looking pretty positive at the moment, is it? Well, let's say it's interesting, certainly. All right. Thank you very much. Well, photocall and incident desk cases next. First of all, what's been coming in on photocall, David? Oh, well, tremendous response. On the credit card thefts, we had over 50 calls, and we've possibly identified both men, because 12 of our callers have come up with the same pair of names. So there's a lot to keep us busy there. In relation to Simon Mason, we, we were looking for some high-performance cars. Well, that Lotus 7 that we featured has now been traced, and we're still looking, though, for, for Simon Mason. So if anyone knows where he is now, please still call us on him. In relation to the jewel robbers, three of them, we've had 23 calls. Eight of them have given us uh, some names and addresses, so that will be followed up. And we've also had some possible leads on Mark Gaskin, uh, so we want to know where he is now. Uh, but nothing more definite than that. So anybody who still knows, please still call. Right, and we had two incident desk cases. What news on those? First of all, yes, the post office robbery. We were looking for witnesses to the movement of the post office van between Kenilworth in Warwickshire and uh, Glasshouse Lane, the cricket club where it was abandoned. We've not had too much on that, but we'd still like to hear from anybody who thinks they saw it. What we have had, though, is a motorway officer who's called us saying he can identify one of those three faces that we showed, the artist's impressions. Uh, if, if you know who they are, or indeed where they are now, please still call us. 
And then lastly, that Nottingham rape, dreadful rape, 70 calls. The most important thing, though, is we've had some information on one of our vital clues. This purse was the victim's purse that was posted back to her anonymously. A caller has phoned in and told us where he found it and will take us to the spot. Hopefully that may well reveal some other forensic evidence that could lead us to our attacker. Let's hope so, David. Thank you. Well, now, the attack on security guards, security core guards, in fact, outside Morrison's supermarket in Halifax. It happened late on a Saturday afternoon, the weekend just before Christmas. DCI Lynn Tolan has been trying to go through all the calls and uh, some quite interesting ones. What in particular? Well, we've had a terrific response, but we've had two calls in particular from people in different parts of Yorkshire who have both given us the name of the same man. The information that they've given us sounds very promising and we're checking that out at the moment. Now, these Securicor cash boxes, I thought they took, contain a sort of dye bomb. Mm -hmm. And we showed earlier the, the effects of that. Yes. Did either of these people talk about people who had dye on them? Because it apparently it goes absolutely everywhere, despite yes. precautions they tried to take. Yes, one of them said that the man that's named had the dye all over him, and particularly on his hands, and it was there for some considerable weeks afterwards. Well, that's obviously uh, a pretty promising thing yes. to, to look at. This... Uh, child's comic book was found in the boot of the car, the getaway car, robo machine featuring the GoBots. Anything on that? Well, we're a bit disappointed with that, really, but we have had one charming child who did ring us with some information about it, who said that she believed it was stolen in a burglary at her house about three years ago. Uh, I don't think we're going to launch a major inquiry into it, but it'll certainly be followed up. All right, thanks very <laughs> much indeed. See you. Well, finally, the murder of Carol Clark from Bristol. Somebody like Carol was seen the morning after she disappeared at Sharpness Docks with a man in a silver Volvo estate car. And that was just a few yards from there that Carol's body was found the next afternoon, Sunday the 28th of March. Mr Bennett, how are you doing on calls? Well, we haven't had a great response and we certainly still would like any sightings of that Volvo car to be uh, brought forward. Uh, we have a, had a lady phone in around 10 to 11 who said that she saw something up in Sharpness which may be of interest to us. She stayed on the phone for quite some time and then rang off and we would like her to come back because we are interested in what she has to say. Right, please call again. Uh, there were the occupants of a red camper van in that, sh in that area at Sharpness you thought may have seen something. They haven't come forward have they? No, they've not and we think that van may have come from somewhere else other than the locality, perhaps visiting the Bris Bristol Waterways. Uh, exercise that was going on on that weekend. Have you found or heard anything about Carol's clothing which was missing? No, we've had no calls about her clothing whatsoever, not her leather jacket or her denim skirt, and neither have we had any calls relative to the meal that we know that she took. She must have had a meal from a fast food outlet, and we would appeal for anyone who may have heard or saw her in the vicinity of any fast food outlet to come forward. Right. If you can help, please do call. You might see in the background some uh, phone lines are still busy. But that's all for tonight. The lines, incidentally, here in the studio are open for another 15 minutes or so. 081 811 8181. And you'll see local numbers in a moment. If you can help in any way, please do call. We hope to have even more progress to report when we come back from the summer break. In the meantime, do watch out for a series called Crime Limited, which is starting in four weeks' time. And uh, over the summer, you can see more of what actually happens behind the scenes here when calls come into the studio. So watch out for Crime Watch File, four films which follow up cases that viewers have helped to solve. Sue and I will be back with Crime Watch UK in September. Meanwhile, unless you've been uh, responsible for any of the crimes we've shown tonight, don't have nightmares, do sleep well. Good night. Good night. Good night. This Friday, we step back to 1963.